What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Realistic Career Mode. It's the season finale today as we play our final two games of the Premier League season where we could be champions or we could choke it. Yep, two games to go. We are one point clear of Manchester City. So back-to-back -back wins at home to Bournemouth, who they themselves are probably going to need to win back-to-back -back in order to qualify for a European competition last season. And West Ham, who I think will probably end up being safe, but still might need a point in order to survive on the final day. Back-to-back -back wins gives us the championship, but failed to win back-to-back. -back. And if Man City do themselves, they're away at Molineux on the final day and home to Arsenal in their penultimate game of the season, and they'll be champions. Very simple scenario. Win back-to-back win the championship, fail to win back to back probably bottle it and finish in second place so let's jump right into it, first of the final two games penultimate game of the season Bournemouth at home in 8th place right now gaming down and Aston Villa a win, puts them in 7th as they're going for a European place but for us against our former team knowing if we fail to win we'll probably drop to second heading into the final day and destiny will be out of our hands Bournemouth, if you still love me after three great years together, can you let me have this win please, first and final two is the Cherries at home Come on, Liverpool. You know, it wouldn't be the first time I've bottled something of this magnitude in the final game or two. I've lost a title on the final day. I've been relegated on a final day. There's been lots of uh, late chokes, if you will, in saves of mine. Uh, but this, this, would, this would definitely be up there as, as one of the worst. We had a chance to really pull away from Man City. And at the time, the chase impact was still in the race couple episodes ago and after I think it was three straight draws we totally let them back in that home draw to Luton who are rock bottom was, was the worst of the lot so this is a good form of team cannot afford not to win this one here oh Addison what a save yeah I um I don't think we win the title if we don't win back to back. Even with Man City having to host Arsenal, incredibly tough game. I don't see us lifting the silverware without winning our final two. Go on, Diaz, off you go, off you go. Go on, Diaz. Go on, Diaz. Go on, Diaz. Oh, what a blood run of Nolly. What a run by Louise. But Alessio deflects it behind for a corner. Fast start from both teams. It's not just us with so much at stake in this game. The Cherry's chasing Europe as well. This is going to be... Oh, yes! The tenth one! Cody Gagbo with the opener. Liverpool lead. 22 goals in 37 and you see there in the top right... The, uh, the early score at the Etihad is 1-1. One, one. Uh, Eric Garcia, that would have been, for Man City levelling. So Arsenal did have the lead, which would have meant if they were to hold on to this and, and we were to hold on to this, then we would, we would be champions. But I'm trying not to think about this. I say this all the time, but like when, when destiny's in your own hands, don't think about favours from other teams and other people. Just do your job. Do you know what I mean? You do your job. You get it done, man. Of course, a favour here and there is nice, but... It's like inheritance, man. It's nice if you get it, but you shouldn't expect it. <clears throat> anyway, uh, still 1-0 as Robertson finds Diaz. I see you, Andy. Oh, he's going to drop to easy! Everett Jesus gives Liverpool the two-goal lead. And 33 minutes in, we might be going further clear at the top. That is going to do it for the half, and we have a two-goal lead. It is about as perfect as it could have been thus far. The ball did show us early doors. They do have a bit of bite in them, as we know. Not, not done yet. Not done yet. Get another goal, though, and this will be one down, one to go. I miss when you could check the scores at half time, you know. I like that because I used to, I used to pretend that, like, you know, when you're at a game and you can hit a half time scores get read out on the tannoy, uh, tannoy, sorry. I used to kind of like read them out in that Tano's voice, you know. <laughs> I'd be like, Manchester City 1, Arsenal 1, as things stand though. Doesn't matter, like I said, doesn't matter what's going on there, man. Destiny is in our own hands, so do our job, which we are right now, and we will be. Ben, run. Premier League champions. Oh, Moose just couldn't pull the trigger. Fair tackle on McKenzie, you're not going to appeal for a pen there, but... I, I think this is a moment here where it's like, if we, if we push for a third, we'll probably get it. But if we sit back and defend, we'll concede. And Bournemouth might battle back from two goals to level it. Fortune favours the brave. I think that's what we've got to do, man, this second half. Don't sit on the two-goal lead. Go for a third. Tyler. Jack. Great tackle. He drops to Solanke. 
who fires in, and here we go. This is what I was afraid of. A little bit unlucky after the tackle, but we got fortunate for the rebound goal we scored for our first of the game. Good tackle there, which dropped straight to Solanke, who drills past Allison. Well, he might have been hurt by the fact that I decided not to bring him with me to Liverpool. Maybe next season, Don, but not if you cost me the title. <laughs> 29 minutes as our lead is cut to one. I'm not panicking, but I certainly will be if it remains at one, heading into the final turn. Is Diaz on side there? <gasps> oh, what a save, Lunin! It's going to be a fourth goal. A dagger or a leveller, but it could go either way. Oh, and there we go in the top right to make it even nervier. There's some murmurs around Anfield right now because Nicolo Barela has just put Manchester City in front for the first time, which means we'll stay at a point as a gap heading into the final day as things stand. If we hold on to this, I'm just passing it around. I am just passing it around from left to right. I'm not going to risk... Chasing a third now. Giving the ball away. Oh, wait. Hang on. Uh, it just goes to the corner. Goes to the corner. Goes to the corner. And then giving a <laughs> giving away a counter for a leveller. Just hold on to it. That's a free kick. Ref would have that. Almost there. Uh, just keeping this in the corner with Shiravela. Flicking it to Salah. And three minutes of stoppage time. And they're basically done. We'll work it back. And that is going to do it. Grinding out a one-goal victory to ensure we will. Oh, wonderful. Oh, what a goal that would have been. Stay top. Heading into the final day. We get the win. We close it out. And we've got West Ham at home on the, on the final day. And the win there wins the championship. So there's, there's no celebrations, which means that I was, just, I was just curious. I thought maybe, just maybe we might see title celebrations. But no celebrations at all, which means that Man City did hold on to their win against Arsenal. I would have said these were both the toughest games for both teams. Us at home to Bournemouth chasing Europe. Man City chasing, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Arsenal um, uh, at home against Man City. When they've got Wolves away on the final day, they should win. There we go. 2-1 final score, which means the table remains the same. Heading into the final day, it's a one point gap and a straight shootout. Win the game, win the championship, fail to win the game, Man City win, bottle it on the final day. It's all or nothing. Yep, this is it. Our final game of the season. West Ham, for those curious, are basically safe. They could technically go down to playing devil's advocate, but really, they know they're safe. So nothing for them to play for and nothing for Man City's opponents, Wolves, to play for as they're away at Molyneux on the final day. So a straight shootout for the title. Win this game, win the championship. For player stats, by the way, Gakpo mm, could make a run for the Golden Boot, but not even thinking about it, man. No, he has won the assist title, for sure. And Allison's won the Golden Glove and could equal Petacek's record of 24 in a season. This is it. Final game of the season, match day 38. Win the game, win the championship. Fail to win the game, choke it on the final day. Wouldn't be the first time I've done it, but I cannot afford to do it once again with my job on the line, surely the conclusion of this game. Let's go win that title. Come on, Liverpool. Yeah, I feel less nervous heading into this game than I did heading into the Bournemouth game, which is quite ironic when you think about it. The title wasn't at stake in, in, in that game. We still would have had a chance to do it in this one, possibly as well, even if we didn't win this uh, that game. But this, this one I feel a lot more relaxed in, because again, Bournemouth had something to play for, West Ham don't. West Ham, they, they know they're going to be safe. They're going to go down. And obviously... Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, we're fine. Um, do you know what? I'm just going to concentrate right now. If you don't mind. <laughs> I'll say I'm not nervous. Oh, come on. Don't lie, Doxy boy. You clearly are. I see you, Gakpo. Diaz takes it on himself, though, and Alphonse turns me eye for a corner. Well, I'll say this. I won't be nervous if we get ourselves an early goal. 13 minutes in, still 0-0. Shot on target early. And another great save by Alphonse, this time on Carl Will. The, er the early goal, when, when you're in games like this, the early goal is what you want, because it really relieves the pressure. The longer it goes on, it's still 0-0. If you need to win, for example, the more you start to doubt yourself. And you know the clock is rapidly running down. But if you can get yourself an early goal, that is absolutely massive. No goal updates at Molyneux, but... Oh, what a ball. Oh! Flynn downs it to bar. And McKenzie just hoofs it behind for a corner. West Ham, they, they might have nothing to play for, but... I mean, they know their opposition manager is a Millwall fan. Of course, they'd love to stop me from getting that Premier League Championship. 
He said he's done well there. Still no nil, -nil but uh, <laughs> what was this about not being nervous, Doxy boy? Yeah, I think people saw straight through that as we're still deadlocked. And there is a goal there. Huang Yi Chan has leveled it for all. So as things stand, we are still going to win the title with both teams drawing on the final day. But I fully expect Man City to win that still. Yeah, I mean, we're definitely not feeling confident at this stage. But there is a whole other half to play. There's been some iconic final days in Premier League history. I was just hoping for a simple 4-0, to be honest. But uh, it doesn't look like we're going to get that. So, I don't panic. It's a whole half to play. But we need a bit more creativity at the moment. Just haven't really had much going on the offensive end. Other than a couple of early attempts, which Alphonse dealt with reasonably comfortably. Second half begins. I'm not panicking. I'm not panicking. But an early goal here will do us the world of good. Gakpo. Diaz. What a ball! Ah, what a ball! Eunice Musa might have got the opener. As the American fires in... The first of the game, and give the credit, what a ball this is by Luis Diaz, man. When you talk about threading a needle, and you know I'm a sucker for an ice assist, that is one of the best of the save, let alone the season, especially considering the significance of it. It's a class finish by Yusa, it's right in the top corner, but that through ball is incredible, man. 16 minutes separating us, and a Premier League title. Oh, sugar. It's gone, it's gone. No, it's not. When I went out of play, he didn't. I don't know if Allison got a touch on that or it just hit the post. What I do know is it stayed out. Go inside, Diaz. Oh my god, where am I going? Okay. Oh, Man City have got in front. Man City have got in front. Don't notify me, Alex. I don't want to know. Like, I don't. <laughs> I appreciate it. But girl, this is not the time to be putting more pressure on me. There's four minutes. Oh no. Yeah, we have. He's a run. Boom car. For the win, no save by Ariel. It's not gonna matter full time, it's over. It's not gonna matter. Not enough time, it's over. <sighs> it's the story of the season. Grinding out one goal victories. It's the American who wins us the title. It's not convincing. It's far from dominant. But it doesn't matter how you get it done, so long as you do. Nervy, tense, close, but completed. Liverpool. Premier League champions. When we arrived here, I said it was a rebuild year. I did not expect the objectives to be as hard as they possibly could be. Win a domestic double? Really bored? Well, hopefully you satisfy one out of the two. We might have blew the Carabao Cup in the semi, same with the FA Cup, but the Premier League is in the bag and Liverpool's first in the post Klopp era is my first in charge of the Reds as well. And again, this game kind of summed up the story of the season to me, really. It was tight, it was tense, it was nervy. We didn't score more than one goal. It was just so, so close. But it's the defence that's got us over the line and ensured we would win that championship. What's that great quote? Goals win games, defence wins championships. Yeah, Liverpool grind out the 1-0 as Alisson lifts the trophy. I didn't make a sub in the game after I was too nervous to make any changes, especially after we got the goal through Musa. And then, yeah, it's the American that proves to be the hero at Anfield. Liverpool, Premier League champions. Goodness gracious, that's... Uh... That's one to remember. Did Man City win? I'm pretty sure they would have done so. Yeah, didn't he? 2-1. So we needed to win. We did win. 
Liverpool, back on top of English football. They're not going to ask me a single question about the title. They've asked me about the, um, the one goal to nil scoreline. Um, and we had a nice unbeaten run in the Good league questions. heading into Thanks this so final. Didn't, didn't ask me a single question. I've just, I've, just, I've literally, it's only technically their second what you call Premier League trophy in history. Yes, I know a lot of first divisions, but we're just talking official Premier Leagues here. Uh, their first in many years as the save has continued, and and, and 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 my first in my career, and we've just done it by winning, I think, six straight or seven straight to hold off by a point. Is that... We don't get... Okay, fair enough. But anyway, yeah, there's the final lead table for you. A point clear of Man City. 56 goals in 38 games. One of the lowest scoring Premier League champs you'll see was the defence that led us there. 21 goals conceded all season long. I don't think, by the way, I've been asked this before... I don't think I'll ever be able to beat that Chelsea record. I've never done it before. Never done it. Never beaten Chelsea's defensive record. I don't think I'll ever come close. If I couldn't do it this season, I'll never do it, I don't think. But as Arsenal and Chelsea do get the top four themselves, Newcastle fifth, Spurs sixth. Well, go on, Bournemouth on the final day. Bournemouth managed to head into the Europa League place. Look at that. Three teams separated by goal difference. Leeds beat Aston Villa, but missed out on goal difference themselves. Wow. Go on, Bournemouth. Staying in Europe, and we'd love to see it. It was Leeds, Aston Villa, and Manchester United wrapping up the top ten. And the bottom three, like I said, West Ham winning go down it was not in the forest Middlesbrough and Luton Town god had that draw to Luton cost of the title I never would have lived that down man but just about got it done in the end courtesy of six wins on the trot to close the season out as for the Premier League player stats uh, Dan Inga won the golden but he scored against me I think at Anfield um, 25 and 37 great striker in this FC with Gakpo in the end finishing in second place three behind him he had a red hot start kind of slowed down a bit after that as he's often away from me in my saves and my seasons but still second in goal scoring Saka third Solanke fourth angling for that big move to us next season maybe you'll get it and Haaland was fifth uh, Jack Clark was in the top 13 as well Nice to see with 14 in 38, but no one else made it there from Liverpool, unsurprisingly, based on our struggles in front of the goal. Gakpo did win the assist title, and Diaz, oh, that assist on the final day saw him jump in the second place. That was an incredible free ball uh, to, uh, to help us get the uh, get the winner through Musa. So nice to see how Liverpool won two there. And as for the clean sheets, well, like I said, Alisson, in the end, equals that famous Petr Cech record of 24 in 38. I don't think I've ever beaten her. I don't think so. Maybe I have. I can't remember. But in this save and in this season, he equals the record of 24 in a single campaign. Defense wins championships and golden gloves. So the team of the tournament uh, sees, well, we've got a couple of Liverpool players in there as Levi Cole and Andy Robertson were part of the back four and rightfully so, no doubt about that. Cole was amazing. I think Cameron should have been in there personally as well for his uh, work showing out the back line. But again, I say it's a lot like the game doesn't normally count those sort of uh, players uh, and give them better average ratings, unfortunately. But uh, even so, uh, you see the full team there. Costa, Robertson, Cole, Will, Araujo, Jaden Bogle, the Blaze. That's an interesting selection. Uh, Phil Foden, Ramsey, Curtis Jones made it in there as did Saka and of course Gakpo and Taram as well that might be the first team in the season I've seen where Erling Haaland didn't get in there and as the goalkeeper of the tournament Alisson wins it despite not being in the team in the tournament yep common bug never ne never, never seen how, hang on the, the Lingle's the top scorer how did he not make the team in the season <laughs> what, what, what's going what that is such so the golden boot winner and the goalkeeper of the tournament golden glove winner neither made a team in the tournament that's strange and I knew this was going to be the case. I intentionally didn't show you the player of the season award there because I knew who it was going to be. Cody Gakpo, who did not win the Golden Boot, but did finish in second, but he did win the assist title. So top of the assist charts, winning the assist title and runner up in the Golden Boot as well. He is one of the main reasons why we won this Premier League title. Justifiably player of the season, I would say. Definitely for all those assists, no doubt about it. And when you think about that, man, his, his goals, uh, th 38 of our 50, was it 53 goals? 30 over 53 were directly contributed either by assist or a goal from Cody Gakpo. The difference maker on so many occasions. And as we take a look at who won the other trophies this season, well, Crystal Palace, as we know, were Carabao Cup winners as a championship side. First time since Sheffield Wednesday back in 1991. It was a Brighton Arsenal final after we were knocked out in pens once again in the domestic cup semi. And the Seagulls beat Mikel Arteta's side to win their first ever major honour. As for the Europa Conference League, where Bournemouth were in it. And more on that in a moment. And they got all the way to the semis, knocking out Lille in the process. Only to be beaten by Sevilla 
who they themselves were beaten by AS Roma as De Rossi wins his first in management. God, I loved watching De Rossi play in his prime. He was a sublime player. Uh, anyway, Bournemouth, the reason they were in the Conference League is because they were knocked out in the Europa League group stage. Uh, but as for the Europa League itself, going all the way through here, some blockbuster ties from the last 16 onwards. And in the end... It was a PSV Mainz final, and PSV came out winners. Man, they are they are really building something there in Eindhoven. And as for the Champions League, well, we'll be going into this next season, and I'm so excited for it as well. You see, Glasgow Rangers top that group there. How about that? Uh, some some very interesting groups indeed. A couple of noteworthy um, knockouts, if you will, in the group stage, including Bayern Munich in Group G as well. Uh, but going into the last 16, Real Madrid and Man City met themselves in this save as well as in real life and heading all the way through to the semi-finals. PSG met Milan in the final and ended up beating them by a goal to nil. They often win the CL in my saves. They've done it again. As for the other leagues, Crystal Palace have double celebration winning the Carabao Cup and finishing runners-up to Brentford, but both going up promoted automatically. Fulham, Southampton, Norwich and Preston North End are in the playoffs uh, in this year's second tier. And we'll see who joins uh, Brentford and Crystal Palace in the Premier League next season. Cardiff City won the League One title with Plymouth right behind them and the playoffs being the Millers, the Posh, Charlton Athletic and Lincoln City in League One this season season and as for League 2 the top three are automatically promoted and that was Shrewsbury Town, Fleetwood Town and Cheltenham Town all the towns and the players will be AFC Wimbledon, Cambridge United, Stockport County and Accrington Stanley and the bottom team this year Newport County they need Gavin Humphreys yeah reference to my club and country of Wales a couple of years ago for those who didn't watch that um I think he was the highest rated player I've ever had 96 overall Madness, what a save. Anyway, uh, Monaco, Champions of Ligue 1. I'm noticing this quite a lot as well. Like, in Ligue 1, PSG don't have a stronghold on it like they used to. It's good, though. We like the parity. But uh, Bayern are back on top of the Bundesliga, though. The past two years, Leverkusen won it this year. Bayern Munich are champions. It's so interesting as well because Harry Kane has just moved on to Manchester United in my save. And the one year he's left is when Bayern are back on top. Look, I don't believe in the supernatural and curses and stuff like that, but I'm just saying it's 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 a, it's a little bit spooky. As for Serie A, Juve, one-point winners with Milan in second and Inter in third. Roma in fourth uh, this year in Italy's top tier. It's a European and league double for PSV, two clear of Ajax to win the Eredivisie this season in the Dutch top tier. Benfica, champions of Portugal, seven clear of Sporting and Porto in second and third in Portugal's top tier. I feel like I should probably start showing the Saudi Pro League now of all the big names they've been attracting recently. But it was Al Hilal this season, uh, finishing seven clear of both Al Ittihad and uh, Al Nasir in Saudi's Pro League. And as for the Premier League in Scotland, no, normal service resumed. We, we, we've seen Aberdeen won it a couple of times in this year's FC24. First time I've ever seen that in my whole YouTube career. But uh, Hearts split the old firm last season to finish in second, but this year normal service resumed. And again, I said this before, I, I know this is the first phase of the Scottish Premier League, and, and, and then there's a second phase when the league splits into two, but you can't see that in career mode. It's limited, so you just got to assume who was top, won the championship. And as for Spain, wow, look at that, round first, first, but... Goodness, Barcelona did finish in fourth to get challenging football, but Athletic Madrid dropping a sixth, and Villarreal in second. That's the highest I've seen Villarreal finish in a uh, in a La Liga season in uh, Korea Mod this year. And we'll do the uh, the Turkish Super League because I always like to show the Super League. You know, Turkey's my favourite country on the planet, man. But Shiktas winning it ahead of Galatasaray on the head-to-head -head record this year with Fenerbahce uh, in third place. And we'll close out with the MLS, which is about a third of the way through right now. And right now, top of the conferences are FC Dallas, four clear of Nashville with LASC in third. As again, we're around a third of the way through here in uh, the United States' uh, Major League Soccer. And so to close out the first season with Liverpool and our fourth season of the say, we'll take one final look at the team. And I've got to say, I, I, I love the team we built in our first season. As our first year of rebuilding, we had that monstrous transfer budget. We sold Rodrigo. We sold, was it? Pedri or Gavi we had. I can't remember. I think it was Pedri. Yeah, Pedri to me and Anne. But I love how we rebuilt the team quite realistically. We brought back some Liverpool Academy grads such as uh, Kwanzaa returning. Shiravela came in on deadline day in January to help the squad and he certainly did as well. But I, I really like how the team was looking, man. We, we're rebuilding this team but we're doing it gradually. We're not just signing the best players in world football and we're doing it realistically too. I, I love how the team is looking, man. For next season, we're going to the Champions League. We're going to attract a better calibre of player now we want to take the next step up because you know you know the board are going to say next season Doxy boy well done on winning the league title they'll keep me in the job for now but 
next year treble treble mate you've got to win a treble so we'll need to bring in some big names to do that uh, so uh, one final going to stats there. you see one of our uh, youth goalkeepers there is going to go and leave on a free transfer uh, Alisson after winning the Golden Glove 24 clean sheets and 38 and equal in the Petacek record he'll be staying as our number one for next season and still wearing the armband as well Danilo is technical club captain but obviously didn't start him in that many games so Alisson will remain wearing the armband I would say hopefully Keller will stay as our backup goalkeeper for next year as well because I've said before I think he's one of the best backup up goalkeepers in world football. Andy Robertson, Iron Man, played all of our 38 games in the league this season, but now at 33, he is going to start going down from next season. But he's at 87 overall right now. He grew a rating this year, but for next season onwards, he will start to go down. So we'll try our best to slow the rate of decline, but we will look to, need to look for a, a long term left back at some point, unless we do decide to keep McKenzie as an official left back. What a debut season for Ben. Up six ratings to 81 overall. These stats are incredible. Seven assists in 32 league games. And he got a goal as well, lest we forget. But it was the clean sheets that were most impressive. 25 and 39. Great defensive record. And he's still getting better and better. You love to see this. Only 18 years old. He's a certified wonder kid, man. And possibly the successor for Robertson. But he has got a five-star weak foot. He played right back all season long. Didn't play left back. I don't know what to do there. Do we change him to an official right back? Or do we just see him as the successor of Robertson in time? No, I guess we'll find out. I guess we'll find out. What a debut season regards from the Wonder Kid. Danilo, club captain, somehow when we arrived. So I always say I don't take the armband off in the first season. Down three ratings, but retiring at the end of the year. So yeah, appreciate Danilo. We didn't play many games for us this season. So totally fine with that. Oh, Roy, who's coming back from loan. The, uh, the club. He's, a, he's, a, he's an asset. He, he, he's an asset he is. He's someone we could either keep as a squad centre half or possibly sell. I'm, I'm hoping that Quan Asset... There we go. So right on cue. Remember when I talked about the buggy? You see the little uh, red um, kind of like no entry sign, if you will. That means he's suspended for Champions League games. But because now we're going to go into the Champions League, that suspension can be cleared. And that means he's going to regain his stamina. So when you look at those stats there. If you haven't watched the whole season, you might have wondered why I haven't played Quan Asset. It's because he's had a bug where his energy has basically been at less than 50% for the entire season, even though we haven't been playing him. That's because of the bug, the suspension hasn't been cleared. For next season, it will get cleared after the first group game, and then his energy will start to go up. So for Granate, not happy with the playtime, but I haven't had a choice, mate, because you've had no energy due to this bug. So hopefully for next season, it will clear, and he'll decide to stay. Uh, Levi Cole, what a signing coming in from the relegated Brentford. 23 clean sheets at 37. Got a goal against the side he spent a year on loan with at Brighton as well. Started off a left back. We said we were converting to LCB. Excellent decision. Grew four ratings, three naturally, one through the position change. What a player he was. And for Jarrell Hato, the young Dutch defender, 16 clean sheets in 24. I've got to be honest, getting him into the back four is going to be incredibly hard for next season because I really like Jarrell, who I'll get to in a moment's time. I'm considering possibly for next season with the stats he's got, great defensive stats, an 89 short pass of 82 ball control. I'm thinking maybe, just maybe, convert him to Anchorman. I mean, he'd have to battle for Bubakar Camera's spot. It's not going to be easy to do, but I'm thinking maybe transition him slightly further up the pitch to the DM role. Because right now, he's struggling to get the game time behind Colwell. He'll be behind Konate, and I think he'll be, be behind this man as well. Because I really like this kid. He played a few games less, but Jarrell Kwanzaa came back. Grew three ratings, and he's still getting better. I like this kid, man. I like him a lot. He's tall. He's got 90 strength. He's got 92 jump. He's got great aggression. He's got good defensive ones. This is a, this is a player. This is a serious centre-half, man. I'm a big fan of this kid. And I, I think, yeah, for next season, Hato, he's going to be behind Kwan as well. I really like Jarrell. Calvin Ramsey's growing a rating at Crystal Palace, but um, he might have helped lead them to the Carabao Cup. I don't know how much better he's going to get, though. 23 years old, only grew one rating. I might look to sell him this summer, as I don't think he's going to get much better now. I have to say I'm pleased with this sign, though. Shira Vela, practically all of his appearances came off the bench. We know he's not going to get any better, but... Um, as a squad midfielder, bringing him in on January's deadline day, just to give us a bit of cover. I didn't mind that signing at all. Homegrown and trained at the club after coming through the academy. Yeah, the stats might show he had a poor half of the season, but again, when you bring a player off the bench, unless they get a goal or an assist, they're always going to have a low average rating, so they've got not, not got enough time to impact the game. But he was solid, man. He was pretty solid for me. Endo, by the way, he's retired. He's not retiring, but he is uh, out of contract coming at the end of the season. Just going to let him go. Not going to send a contract. He's going down rapidly and he barely played this season at all. Bubakar Camera, great sign from Aston Villa. Two assists, uh, three assists, sorry, in 40 games this season, but 20 clean sheets in total uh, in the Premier League in 34 games, I think it was. 
one of the best signs of the season, in my opinion. I always say these sort of players, they never get the love. Why? Because they'll rarely get an assist and they probably won't score all season long. They do an excellent job protecting the back line. We don't have the best defensive record in the division without Bubakar Kamara protecting my back four. He was solid all year long. Uh, Tyler Morton also out on loan at Crystal Palace, helping him get promoted and win the Carabao Cup. Uh, grew a rating just like Calvin Ramsey, but again, like the right back. Probably will sell him in the summer. I oh, know they're both on two-year loans, aren't they? I think. Yeah, no, Tyler, well, Tyler's back in the summer, but I'll probably sell him. I don't think he's going to make much of an impact here long term. Curtis Jones, great homecoming for him. Six goals and three assists in 44 games. Excellent box-to-box, -box, growing a rating to 84 overall. Not sure how much better he's going to get now at 26 years old, but Liverpool lad, born in Toxteff, I believe. So, yeah, he's staying, of course, no doubt about that. We love Curtis Jones. Eunice Musa, he's wrote himself into Liverpool folklore with the game winner on the final day. 16 clean sheets in 34 Plus, he got the three goals as well and a grower rating as well. But it's the final day goal that we will remember the most. This guy is one of my favourite players in this team because he's just got stats to play literally everywhere. We played him at right back. There was a game where I shifted him to left back. I played him CM. I played him CDL. I played him everywhere. And he always put in a good shift, man. The American is loved here at Anfield, especially after the final day goal. Have you Guerra submitted a loan request, by the way? I didn't talk about this during the season, but he submitted a loan request. That never happens to me, but didn't play in that much this season most of his minutes came off the bench hence the low average rating particularly in the Premier League in the FA Cup but I'll probably look to loan him out in the summer if not then sell permanently I'll keep you posted on that uh, both of these two players are going to be leaving no McConnell's not but Balagizzi is going to leave uh, on a free in the summer totally fine with that as for Eberet Gize what a signing he was from relegated pilots man eight goals and five assists in 41 games and most of those coming in the Premier League as well this guy was solid now real briefly on this I know what you're thinking, Doxy boy, have you lost your mind? Yes, but there's a good reason why I'm doing this and training him to CB. It's to get those defensive stats up because I am going to plan to play him CM in this team long term. And I mentioned this before, when, when you are uh, looking to improve a certain range of attributes, but you can't find a way to do them or focus on them through a development plan themselves. For example, you look at his A stats right here. If, if you want to play him as a CM, where are his weak spots? Well, defensively and a reasonably low strength and aggression. How do I get that through a development plan? I can't. No development plans focus on that because he's primarily an offensive player. So if you want to get those defensive stats up, you can retrain him into one of the defensive positions. You don't need to convert him there. We're not going to convert Eze to centre-half, but what we are going to do is focus on those defensive stats. Once you do that, once they get up to a certain level, then we can take him off that positional change and then change him to balance. I know it's strange. I know it seems bizarre trying to convert him to CB, but we're not. It's just for the short term to get those stats up and then eventually, once they're good enough, we'll put him on a more balanced or, or, or natural uh, development plan or just change him to CM. Either's fine. So yeah, that's why I'm training Eze to center off because I felt I couldn't I couldn't just show you that and not touch on it. I know some people will be confused, but hopefully that does give you guys a little small tip there. Uh, Fabio Carvalho really only came off the bench for me at times. I, I don't think I'll keep him here long term. He's still growing. He's still getting better. And you know, 24 years old, 81 overall. I'm okay keeping him, but I think I think there are better options there, and I do plan on bringing in someone better for the bench as well. But Diaz, though, man, Luis Diaz, what what a season! Grew a rating to 85 overall. He's now hit 30. He's probably not going to get much better now. We extended that contract in the summer. And I've got no plans for this guy to leave until retirement, man. I love Luis Diaz. We all love Luis Diaz. For all the things he enjoyed this year in real life, man, you, you, you've got to give the guy so much love and so much respect. And for me, in, in this season, in the save, 11 assists include that incredible one uh, on the final day that pro uh, provided the game winner. Um, yeah, this, this guy is amazing, man. We love Luis Diaz in Liverpool, and I certainly do as well. And the Baron next year, grew a rating this year, probably going to sell him in the summer. Again, most of his appearances came from the bench, and he's not getting any better now at 82 overall. So probably going to sell him, trying to go back to Spain in the summer if I can. But as for Mo, whilst the magic hasn't run out fully, we know it's rapidly becoming... Yeah, sooner rather than later for a time for Salah. Six goals and three assists in 17, though. He had a fantastic start. But it was the broken toe. It was the classic career mode injury. The broken toe that really, really screwed him over. As soon as that happened, he never really bounced back. He scored that incredible game winner against uh, someone. Uh, against Leicester, it might have been. Aston Villa. I can't remember. In our final running. But we know he's down four. He's, his legs have gone. He's got no pace. For, for next season, onwards, I'm hoping he'll retire at the end of next year. 
And yeah, he'll, he'll just be here for the vibes, man, for the dressing room, no doubt about that. For Gakpo, though, player of the season for the Premier League and our player of the season. Second highest scorer in the league, won the assist title, 22 goals and 16 assists in all the 38 games he played in the league, averaging one in one for direct contributions. The man is not the main reason we won the title, I would say. I would still say that's probably our defence, but... Put it this way, we wouldn't have won the title without him. Absolutely not. What a baller. And so glad he's staying as our leader uh, in our front three with Athena Jan, the understudy. So that will do it for season one with Liverpool, guys. Massive, massive thank you for watching the first season at Anfield. It, it might not have been a dream first season, winning that domestic double. We certainly bottled it in the Carabao Cup. I say we. I certainly bottled it in the Carabao Cup in the FA Cup. But we redeemed ourselves with that Premier League title, the first in the post club era and my first with Liverpool as well. And next year, we're going to try and run it back, win it back to back, and go for the FA Cup, the Carabao Cup, and the Champions League. Quadruple, why not? Dare to dream, right? Dare to dream. Thank you for all the love on the first four seasons of the Realistic Career, man. I cannot tell you how much fun I'm having on this save, man. And I really hope you guys are enjoying as well. This has been honestly so fun. I'm absolutely loving it, and i got no plan to stop anytime soon. So we'll do a, do a new season, brand new season starting tomorrow afternoon. That'll be the start of season five in our second year in Liverpool, and after the first year of laying down the groundwork in our rebuild, with this summer window coming, we're going to look to make some really big moves, big sales, and big signings in the summer transfer windows. We'll chase the quad next season. Thank you so much, guys. Appreciate it very much. Much love to you all, and I'll see you for a brand new season of the Realistic Career Mode very soon.